you know, a lot of people exercise for a lot of different health reasons, for weight loss, for general fitness, but not a lot of people exercise to prevent cancer or if they have cancer to improve the outcome. I have some really interesting data that I'm gonna share with you that not only shows an interesting connection, but why it decreases the risk for cancer is very interesting. Study after study, and I'll, I'll put quite a few studies down below, shows a major decrease in risk of getting endometrial cancer, colorectal cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, ovarian cancer, gastric cancer. Did I mention breast cancer? I think I did. So let me give you a couple little basics to uh, share before I explain why exercise will help a person. Number one thing you need to know is cancer occurs from a normal cell. Somehow, for various reasons, the mitochondria become damaged, and then the cell switches, flips its metabolism to the fermentation of things like glucose. So a normal cell uses a lot of oxygen. A cancer cell in their fermentation process is done without oxygen, so it's anaerobic. So we have a normal cell, uses a lot of oxygen, and a cancer cell doesn't have to use oxygen at all. It ferments things. Now, another difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell is that a normal cell has a lot of mitochondria. In a cancer cell, there's not a lot of mitochondria, okay? Those are damaged or not working. A normal cell has a limited lifespan, okay? It can't live forever. And one way that the body does this is through something called apoptosis, which is controlled cell death, where your cells commit suicide. So they don't, don't keep growing. In cancer cells, they don't get the signal to create apoptosis. So they keep living on and on and on. So that's what apoptosis is. It's controlled cell death. A normal cell gets this trigger and that trigger comes from a certain type of byproduct from the mitochondria, okay? And it's a byproduct from using oxygen, okay? And that byproduct is called ROS, okay? It stands for reactive oxygen species with an S. It's a group of several reactive chemicals that influence our bodies in a certain way, and it reacts to the body. And the reaction that I want to talk about is in its ability to trigger apoptosis. So ROS triggers the cells to commit suicide. In cancer cells, you have a deficiency of ROS. In normal cells, you have an abundance of ROS. So to make this really simple, the more oxygen that you can give your cells, the more ROS or reactive oxygen species that you have to trigger apoptosis. This is why things that have low oxygen enhance cancer, okay? Like smoking, for example, um, you're decreasing oxygen in the body. Like an infection, that's a low state of oxygen in the body. Like inflammation, okay? Why do you think cancer invades areas of inflammation? Because there's less ROS to trigger the apoptosis and it can grow more. This is another reason why cancer tends to grow in areas of old injury too. And if someone's smoking and irritating the lungs, that would be like micro trauma. Now in chronic stress states, you have a lowered amount of oxygen. In a high glucose state, so if someone's a diabetic, or maybe they're consuming a lot of carbohydrates and running on their bodies on sugar or carbs, that's at a lower oxygen state than uh, a state where they're burning uh, ketones or your fat. But this next thing is very interesting. Why is it that when they do research on synthetic antioxidants like beta carotene and alpha tocopherol, which is vitamin E, or the synthetic versions of these vitamins, that there is an increased risk of cancer. Could it be that these synthetic antioxidants or antioxygen chemicals lower the oxygen, thereby lowering the apoptosis in cancer cells? Well, I think that's really what occurs because in the studies that show that these antioxidants worsen cancer, they, they always use synthetic. They don't use the natural um, version. 
And so it's important to understand this because if you have cancer or you wanna prevent cancer, there are things that you can do to um, slow things down or hopefully prevent things, okay? Number one, you know, get on a ketogenic diet, of course, get your, your dietary sugars way down. Maybe you wanna do the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, okay? That's one thing you could do. Now, this is something I'm not recommending, but the way that several chemotherapies work and even radiation is that they increase more ROS, okay? Which then creates apoptosis in the cancer cell. But the problem is it comes with the package and creates a lot of other collateral damage and side effects. But one of the biggest things that will increase oxygen and ROS is exercise, simple exercise. Exercise increases your oxygen by 10 to 20 times, and it can increase ROS by a thousand times. So this is just another reason to exercise to prevent cancer. And again, if you have cancer, you should be exercising, just flooding your body with oxygen. This is gonna increase the uh, byproduct ROS, which will help create apoptosis to the cancer cell. I've done a lot of videos on cancer, but this is another little thing that you can add to the protocol. Plus exercise also improves your blood sugars and insulin resistance, okay? Which will then get, decrease the risk of getting cancer from another angle because people that have insulin resistance, obesity are at a higher risk level for getting cancer. Also, if you're exercising outside, you get the vitamin D. The vitamin D has been known to decrease the risk of getting cancer as well as a certain amount of sun rays like the infrared spectrum. I'm not talking about burning yourself. I'm talking about getting a dosage of sun that's not too much, just like a moderate amount. So you don't let yourself get burned. The other thing the exercise will do is increase the number of mitochondria, okay? Because when cancer cells, you just don't have enough mitochondria to produce the oxygen and the ROS. And lastly, exercise will improve your immune system, the very thing to help fight off cancer because there's two types of cells in the immune system that directly kill cancer cells. Now, for more information about what to eat for cancer, watch this video right here. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before